We are live from the studios of the Association of African Universities headquarters here in Accra, Ghana, and this is AAU Talks. My name is Kusi Sam. Today on AAU Talks, we are discussing sustainable job creation for the African youth. And don't forget that you can join the conversation via our social media platforms, Association of African Universities on Facebook, and AAU underscore 67 via Twitter. We will go for a short break, and when I come back, I will introduce my guests. Stay tuned. This is AAU Talks. Sacred knowledge is at our very fingertips. Knowledge that can illuminate our lives and the lives of our children and our families. So what are you waiting for? Join the Islamic Online University today and fulfill the prophetic command seeking knowledge is obligatory on every Muslim. You may join the diploma course, which is absolutely free with no hidden costs at all, or the BA in Islamic Studies based on the curriculums of the Islamic University of Medina as well as Al-Azhar University. And join the collective effort in changing the nation through education. Welcome back from the break and viewers, this is AAU Talks on AAU TV. And today we are discussing sustainable job creation for the African youth. And don't forget to join us, send us your comments, send us your, your views. What do you think about the topic for today, um, sustainable job creation for the African youth? And we are privileged to have two young gentlemen who are brilliant and they are very innovative to help me discuss this subject. And the first to be introduced is the Chief Executive Officer of um, Platinum Africa Solutions in the person of Mr. Derek Vomao. Derek, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Welcome sir. to AE Talks. Thank you very much. Great. And the second um, resource person, or the second guest to be introduced, he is in the person of um, Mr. Prince Apa. And Mr. Prince is also the Head of Research and Public Relations at TANO. TANO is the African Network of Entrepreneurs. Prince, you are welcome. Thank you very How much. How are you? Very good. Great. So, gentlemen, finally, you are welcome to a talk, and Thank we you. are glad that you could join us today Thank to you. discuss um, a very important topic that has to do with job creation for the African youth. For the past few weeks, I've been interviewing vice chancellors and some seasoned academics on the continent. We are looking at how we can revitalize African higher education to suit the current demand of, of industries and then the, the, the continent as, as a whole. And the basic thing is that we must ensure that our students are entrepreneurial. We must ensure that our universities are running programs that are in line with, with industry. Let me first take your, your view on, mm. on that assertion from our academics. Mm. So um, a warm greetings to everyone watching. Mm. Um, so I think when it comes to this subject matter, I mean, mm. it's, it's one of the areas that are very, very important and is raising a lot of concerns. I mean, in our system right now, sure. when it comes to bridging the gap between education or the classroom and then industry. Sure. You know, in the last two weeks, we are the event together that told mm -hmm. people that the gap is, is you. But then now let's look at redefining that gap again. Mm. Okay, what, is, what do we mean by someone being entrepreneurial? For me, it's just the ability to solve problems mm -hmm. and being paid for it. Good. You understand me? It's as basic as that. It's being able to solve problems and then being paid for it. And I keep sharing on most platforms I get a chance to sit on that. Mm -hmm. Ghana is very rich, or Africa is very rich, because we have a lot of problems here. Sure. So, um, an, an undeveloped continent. Exactly. Has a lot of so here. every problem poses a business opportunity sure. you know, for, for entrepreneurs. And the, the moment you, you make a move to solving a problem, then you become entrepreneurial mm -hmm. because even in, in the workplace, I mean, I, one of the, my jobs, my job role is to recruit for companies. Okay. And even in that lane, I don't hire CVs. Okay. I hire people that have the potential of solving many of the problems that my clients are facing. Okay. You understand me? So that is what even um, people are looking at. So for me, entrepreneurial, being an entrepreneur doesn't mean necessarily starting up a business, a business, but it's just the ability to solve a problem and being paid for it. 
which is a very, very important thing that we have to address mm -hmm. and make our students aware Understand. of exactly that we are not just supposed to sit in the classroom and then uh, at the end of the four year period, you graduate with a certificate, which probably costs like three cities to print. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Sure. That is not enough. But during the four year period, what have you built yourself into? into okay. what, what, what has the program that you've studied, um, how has it immersed into you? How have you immersed yourself into the program to be able to solve a problem? Mm -hmm. you know, and what are the problems you've identified? So mm -hmm. I think I buy into that, that we have to make our students understand the need for them to be entrepreneurial from the perspective that being an entrepreneur is the ability to solve problems, Identify not necessarily the and solve it. as a, not necessarily starting up a business like okay. we think. Entrepreneurship is somebody who started a business. Okay. There are people who are we call them intrapreneurs mm -hmm. within an organization. Exactly. You understand? But the way they perform their roles at, in the organization is just like they are solving problems mm -hmm. innovatively. Mm -hmm. You know, innovation plays a key role here. Mm -hmm. So if you've gone to uni for four years or or whatever it is for four years and then you are just coming out with a certificate and you've not been able to become innovative, what is the process of innovation? Mm -hmm. How do you innovate? You understand me? Then there's a problem. So I think it's something that we really we we need to delve into make into. people understand the redefinition we are giving to entrepreneurship. Great. Let me take your initial comment, especially the, the difference between uh, buying and selling, and then uh, real entrepreneurs. That just as he has said. I mean, like now. first of all, it's good that maybe our academic uh, uh, our academic is now getting to come to terms mm -hmm. about the job creation or the job creation that uh, is currently facing the continent mm -hmm. and trying to see the importance that young people need to start creating not necessarily businesses but uh, creating activities that make them independent maybe after school or that can really sustain them uh, as maybe um, role models to other people as well mm -hmm. uh, but we also have to examine the context in which they are also preaching their exactly sure. Do we have the enabling environment that is going to make sure that all these people that are coming out of school are going to be entrepreneurial? Mm -hmm. Are we sure that the curriculum that we have in school that we are teaching every single day, it's kind of enabling or can give the potential to young people to go out there and create jobs instead of seeking for jobs? Mm -hmm. So I mean, like we'll commend the, uh, the uh, academia for what they are preaching, mm -hmm. but we'd like to put it to them that they also need to start working on their tools. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, I've been in school and uh, I know people who are reading business administration, but even in their first year, second year, they don't know anything about business. Mm -hmm. They've not been to the field to study or understand any entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. The only thing that they have to them are resources from, I mean, I mean Europe or in, from America. Exactly. We do not even have resources to even understand the entrepreneurs on our continent to even know how they thrive or how they even start their business. Mm -hmm. So for me, if the academia is trying to preach and um, this message for us to get students to become entrepreneurs, I think they need to do more on their side in helping the students to become entrepreneurs because students are in school to learn a course. For example, I'm in school to learn um, communications, but the school should be able to teach me how successful other people have started companies out of this. Mm -hmm. For example, who are the best communicators in the country and okay. who are the best business people in the country that are into communications. But the school never teach you that. The school is going to teach you about how uh, to get the, your CV very well, how to get um, the knowledge to just go and be employed. But I think if they really, really, really want us to, to become entrepreneur after school, they need to start working on our curriculum, which is very important because that is what is shaping us. Without that, I mean, we will not go anywhere. And the, the perception also that entrepreneurship is some sort of fashion also has to be demystified when it comes to we preaching it. Okay. Um, I see a lot of young people trying to be Bill Gates, but you never see anybody trying to become in their spites mm -hmm. because they don't want to start how they started. They want to start with Bill Gates, starting getting the resources and getting other things. We need to... I mean, change the concept in, in which we even preach okay. entrepreneurship to young people now. Because I think it's not helping a lot of people. Okay. Because they see it as a very nice thing, they jump into it, and all of a sudden they get to realize that, wow, it's a hell. <laughs> and the, the reality is, is Yeah, and then they are trying to see ways in which they can dodge it. But mm -hmm. I mean, you're already inside, and you're, you've already told your family members that you are CEO of this and that. So <laughs> they, want, they want to see you to produce results. And sure. you know, in, in this part of the continent, it takes you five years to produce the same result that somebody would take somebody a year mm -hmm. to produce somewhere else. So I think 
for me, I'm excited that they are preaching that message, mm -hmm. but it still comes back to them. Okay. They have a lot of work to do because we don't have any say when it comes to our curriculum or we don't have any say when it comes to what they teach us in school. Mm -hmm. We can demonstrate against it, but I think if it has come to them that mm -hmm. yes, what they are teaching now is not good mm -hmm. or they need to maybe advance it. I mean, they need to do a lot of work for that. And we'll be very grateful if because be the, the, the future of the content is actually us. Yes. So if you're not able to train us now, that means the future that you want your grandchildren to enjoy, I mean, will not be there. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, let me, both of you started your businesses or whatever whilst we're still in school. Yes. Um, let me start with you, um, Derek. How difficult or easy for you mm -hmm. to just juggle your academics and still start, start up your own business? You are in school. What? How did? How did you start it? And mm. what was the the drive, the passion for you? Okay, so let me make it very relatable for everybody watching. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, right after senior high, I did my diploma in mm -hmm. business studies, which was supposed to be for two years. Okay. I tried for one year, and I, I got a distinction, mm -hmm. and I applied for a job. Okay. okay, my dream job as I then was to work in a bank. Mm -hmm. So as at between nineteen twenty, I got my first bank job. So I, when I got into the bank, then I applied for studies to read Banking and Finance, Bachelor of Science, in the evening school. Okay. So I was working during the day. At where? And it, Which yeah, school? Um, UPSA, UPS, okay. exactly. So I, I was reading Bachelor of Science and Banking and Finance. All right. So I was doing that. And then now, second year, I got out of the bank, and then I had to start my, my company. Mm -hmm. How did I start? I was really passionate about the fact that um, I had a lot of ideas. Strategies came to me naturally. So it just comes to my mind, and I just know, I just knew how to work with money. I just had a connection to solving main, some of the many problems that businesses are facing in, 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 in the world, focusing on Ghana. So I found a need there that, okay, I have these ideas. I could come up with a good plan, good strategy, good marketing, and all of those things. For another company, they would be willing to pay for that. So why don't I start this? And I didn't, as, as I did, I didn't have anything, so I, I started with a broad laptop. Okay. You know, and then I, I brought uh, my best friend's laptop at the time um, for three months. I, 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 it was tough because no no interest no 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 nothing <laughs> i mean I, I i said i really and i love the whole process i mm -hmm. i keep telling people that if i had the chance i would i would love to go back to when i started and like i would not take each day for granted mm -hmm. because i felt like that was the time that built i was built into a resilient entrepreneur mm -hmm. that moment of my life defined has defined me okay. has made me who i've become because i i went through the process of building this company which we say is, is um, my company, we are preaching that is, is we, are, we are hoping to become the most reliable business consulting firm in mm -hmm. Africa. Sure. You understand? And we, we are running the company here in Ghana and Kenya as well. Mm -hmm. So being able to build it from a broad laptop into what it's become right now, mm -hmm. that process has been priceless for me. Mm -hmm. And for me, it has taught me the principle of resourcefulness. You understand? A lot of patience, a lot of, lot of consistency. You know, and uh, being able to put your business on the path of sustainability mm -hmm. that years from now, because it's not just about starting. Mostly when I go to events and I have to talk about starting a business, I get off because I'm like, starting is not the message I will be preaching. It's about building this for life. Mm. Yeah, because anybody can just start. I, you could Google how to start a business. And I don't like to talk about things you can find on Google. Mm -hmm. It should be something I have done, I have felt, I have experienced. The passion. Exactly, the that I can give out to sure. someone. So for me, it was the, the one, and one of the difficult things that I faced was the fact that I was young. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was consulting. You had to do with people that are in this for like years. Exactly. But then, some way, some, I don't know, this thing just kept coming. So there, I know there are times, like Prince said, I was not the kind of entrepreneur that, that was looking for an office and all of those flashy mm -hmm. stuff. I'll, I went out, I'll walk in the hot sun, I'll go to Osu, I'll go to companies, restaurants, tell them that, hey, we do this, we do that. Some of them really treated me like, so bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, at times I just woke up and I'm like, today I want to be broken. Let me just go out there, <laughs> go to companies I don't know about, just tell them I'm here. Some of them will look at you like, where did you come from? Mm -hmm. I mean, how old are you? Who are you, know, you? Exactly. And so that was a major challenge I faced, the fact that I, I was young. And that's one of the problems here in Ghana. If you are young, it looks like you are incompetent, you can't do anything until you are 40. You understand? And we are the same people preaching that young people should do this. But when the same young people come to you, they will start acting up like they are, they are too young. But I'm glad that right now um, some of us have been able to redefine that narrative. Okay. I mean, that's that thing that used to be there. I have companies that have been here for over 50 years that are 
coming to us for services. Mm -hmm. You know, they are trusting us with their money. Mm -hmm. They are trusting us to deliver to them. And I see some of the young people really doing amazing. And mm -hmm. it's always, it, it shows that we can be trusted. Sure. We are not too young to be trusted. You know, so that was one of the major challenges. And also, I think one of the challenges was, um, I think it was one of the challenges I overcame was the fact that I had to really see a vision for this company. Mm -hmm. You know, where are we heading to? In the next five years, what do we want to become? What do we want to become years after now? What is the brand perception mm -hmm. that we want people to have about us when our name is mentioned? Okay. You know, and these are things that most startup entrepreneurs do not think about that a brand is not actually the colors or the logo it is the perception it is the promise okay you understand me? Yeah, Derek, let me take you back to yeah. the, the the school days mm -hmm. that is where we have a lot of the problems mm -hmm. i have young people who come to me I, I i sit down with them go to their business plans and proposals and i i tell them look in the next two years if echo bank should employ you you just mm -hmm. throw this business plan somewhere what was your motivation? You see, mm -hmm. how were you, did you have, a lot of us go to school and we are so much bent on making the first class mm -hmm. excel academically. Mm -hmm. And if we want to combine anything with it, we are thinking of, oh, will I be able to make it? What was the dilemma for you? That, for that, that, that point is very important. Very. I mean, I, I kept, I, I shared with some students last, last week and I told them that when I was in uni, this is what I did. I personalized every course that I took. Okay. I saw a reason for me to take that course that, okay, I'm running this company, so I'm doing, um, if I'm doing a course in insurance, mm. I should understand this for me. You understand me? And that is one of the things that sometimes we, we, we fail to understand as students, that mm -hmm. this shouldn't just be about studying to go and write an exam, exam. and passing. Mm. My goal was not to make a first class. Okay. My goal was to make sure that I become a first class person here, that I'm not paying school fees for a, a paper. I'm paying the, the lecturers to teach me something I don't know. Mm -hmm. So if, if it's something I already know, then my expectations from them will be high because okay. they need to really show me something. And that's one of the problems I have with most of the unis that some of the lecturers are actually teaching courses they haven't done practically. Mm -hmm. Like you cannot teach me entrepreneurship when you've not started a business. It's the truth. Okay. You won't understand what it means to be an entrepreneur if you've not been there. So you, mm -hmm. you are teaching me theories, but I want something more than what's in the book okay you understand me so i had to personalize my courses and that's one of the things that helped me like i read programs and i had to like understand it from my perspective that okay so if we are doing um finance i mean a business finance is this so for me this is what i will I'll need to apply and that helped me to explain myself in examinations and stuff okay. you know so i i personalized the courses for myself Make sure that I understand what they are teaching. If it's not something I would want to know, or possibly something I could get on Google, I wouldn't want to be there. Great. You understand? Yeah. I think so. I have a lot of questions to ask you, but <laughs> let me go to Prince. Sure, Prince, sure. how was your personal experience combining the idea, the passion, the thought of start, starting a business in school, vis-a-vis uh, -vis your academics as well? So I mean, I mean, like I would like to encourage every young person that <clears throat> whenever any opportunity of you starting a business come, take it and grab it and use it because mm -hmm. at the end of the day it's one of the key things that is needed is the experience mm -hmm. uh, you know even you know even if you're applying for a job everybody wants experience now before you can give you something mm -hmm. uh, my, my first business that i handed was not my business okay. but this is one, one of the things that person preached to me it was uh, pastor jude he said prince i'm glad i'm teaching you how to make money at this age and i was 19 mm -hmm. and he wanted to start a newspaper and then he wanted a young person to champion it, so he selected me. And I didn't have any business experience. I didn't, the only thing that I did was in high school then was being an editor in chief. We started a, a news club on campus, so every Monday and Friday we were going to read news at Assemble to students. So I picked up some experience from there. And then we started a newspaper. So at the age of 19, I was editor in chief of a newspaper. Okay. And what he told me was, I'm glad I'm trying to teach you to make money. But when I started, I didn't have the thing in me that I was in this to actually make money. Mm. I was there just because I was there because of passion. Yeah, I'm passionate about this. And one of the things that we as young entrepreneurs need to, to note is that it's not only about passion that will make you eat in the evening. Mm. It's about adding sense to the passion and making money out of it. Sure. Now, when, when it comes to combining maybe our lifestyles as students and entrepreneurs, I can tell you that it's not easy. Uh, for example, I run a company called Advanced Media, mm. and we are into the ranking of young people and then trying to celebrate them every year. 
So this year, young people in business or yeah, no, country? young people in general. So general, from okay. business to I mean politics oh. Oh. to lifestyle to entertainment. Oh. So one of the key things that I mean this year I was really discouraged to still continue running my business mm -hmm. because it came to a point where uh, when we were supposed to be announcing our winners, it was the same week that I'm supposed to write exams. Oh. So imagine if. I didn't have any commitment or I didn't have any experience to this. I would have filled my paper, my papers mm -hmm. and I said I filled in my business as well. So as young people, we need to really grow the strategy. I mean, we need to grow ourselves with a lot of strategies mm -hmm. as to how we can survive in business. Because as he said, it's not easy combining being in school and then running a business. It has a lot of clashes. And for example, the school doesn't care whether you're in a business or not. All that they care about is you're paying school fees and you're coming to sit there and write paper or coming to sit there and sit in, uh, coming, to, uh, coming to school to sit in lecture room and then listen to them or do whatever thing that they ask you to okay. do. So, but for me, I think we need to encourage more young people to, to combine, to take challenges. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, you have to take challenges and, and see how best you can manage it because you never know what big opportunities that you have in future that, I mean, we need this same sort of experience for you to be able to overcome, to overcome this. So I think young people should, should get the opportunity. If, if, they, if, they, if they get it, they should grab it and try and see how best they can mold it. I, mean, I don't think there's any defined formula of how you can juggle maybe entrepreneurship and then, I mean, schooling at the same time. It comes based on your own commitment. And that is how you can be able to stand, stand out okay. in academics and both in your business. All right. Mm -hmm. So listening to the two of you, <laughs> there, there's a simple message um, that you are putting across that has to do with the fact that you can't leave your passion out of it. Mm -hmm. And that is what drives you even to go to the lecture theater. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've been in that situation before where I sit um, doing lectures and my mind is somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of what the lecturer is teaching and what I can make out of out of it right from the classroom. Mm -hmm. Now, let us situate passion mm -hmm. very well with bus with as in business success. Okay. Do, do we have any correlation passion mm -hmm. and business success? Yeah. Yeah. For me, I think um, I'm very blunt when it comes to this. Mm -hmm. I'm so passionate about business that it's so obvious. I mean, any any time I'm talking about it, because I feel like passion is not enough. Okay. It's just like love not being enough to maintain a relationship. Mm -hmm. You understand? Passion is passion. If you don't take care, you end up running something out of passion and out of passion. And trust me, you years down the line, you exactly you would you would you would you wouldn't be remembered. Okay. You understand? Yeah, because business is is, is a it's a tough ride. Mm. And I shared in my book what they don't tell you about entrepreneurship in, from my perspective. Right. And I made people understand that it's not it's not a fun ride like we think. I mean, you are going to be dealing with a lot of drama, mm -hmm. a lot of things. So if passion is just the only thing that's going to drive you, that's then the yeah, then you should you should you should, you should just find something else. But but it, 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 passion is 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 key. You know, it is a starting point to solving a problem, and that makes you a true entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. A true entrepreneur is someone that is connected to the problem that he or she is solving. Mm -hmm. So because of the problem, they wake up at two a.m. cooking up ideas. How do I solve this problem? Mm -hmm. How do I make money out of this? How do I make pe people's lives better out of what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. That makes you a true entrepreneur because there's a connection to the problem. And that's yes, one thing about passion when it comes to that stage. When you are um, connected to the problem, because of the primary connection you have, there will be secondary problems you'll be identifying. Exactly. Um, I mean, other problems you'll be identifying around the major problem. Mm -hmm. For example, Someone is starting a food business because people would be hungry to eat. But then again, because there's a connection to the business, the person thinks that at a point, people wouldn't want to come out to buy food. They want to sit at the comfort of their homes, homes. in their offices to buy food. So I have to do free deliveries. Out of that, I can start a delivery firm. So of course, other restaurants would want to have that service as well. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now, they wouldn't want to call me to, the, to order anymore. They want an app. Let me partner with an uh, IT guy. Mm -hmm. Create an app. People can buy the food online. You understand? Now, at a point, again, they wouldn't want to eat meat. That people want to be health conscious. Sure. So now they want to eat more greens. So because of the connection, you get to have other ideas around the problem. And that makes you a true entrepreneur. And that makes the difference between those that are preaching entrepreneurship to be fancy and flashy and the role of a CEO to be bossy and mm -hmm. all beautiful mm -hmm. to those that are actually on the ground solving problems. That makes them true entrepreneurs. And now, passion. So passion is a key, it is a key thing, fine. But then I think it takes a lot of discipline. Okay. Where does it start from? 
do you lay your bed when you wake up in the morning? Mm -hmm. Do you have a routine that you adhere to every day? Because mm -hmm. that's where discipline starts from. And that's one of the things I did to be disciplined, to just for my business. That I, when I wake up in the morning, first thing I do, if I don't leave my bed, I don't leave the house. Mm -hmm. I have to read my Bible. I have to read my Bible before I sleep. Mm -hmm. You understand me? This is something I started myself to keep me disciplined. So I know that, okay, um, the rule of um, business entity, that me being a separate entity from my business, that makes you disciplined that you know that, okay, when 10000 is coming to the company, it's not my money. You understand me? I get paid this amount of money. Maybe every contract I work on, I get paid 20%. The company takes 80%. Mm -hmm. It's discipline. And that's how we run the business. That at a point when you are broke, the company is having money. It doesn't mean it's your money. Mm -hmm. You stay disciplined and true to the cause that this is the company I'm running here. It's a business. People are owing you. They, they've got to pay. People need to pay a price for the solutions you have. Mm -hmm. So if it's just about passion, people will be having it for free. All right. And that is not a business. Mm -hmm. That is a passionate activity. Mm -hmm. That is a project. That is like a service. It doesn't but bring any money. It doesn't mean it's not a business. Mm -hmm. A business is an activity where somebody is willing to pay a price for another person's solution to their problem. Okay. So until that link has been established, until that grounds has been established and it's fertile, mm -hmm. then you're not running the business. Until somebody is willing and able, willing and able mm -hmm. to pay a price for what you have to offer to them without doubting your competence, without doubting your delivery, then you're not a businessman or a woman. All right, let me take your, your, your comment on uh, this and then I'll go for a short break. I, I think passion is that thing that just keeps you going. Okay. But for your business to really survive, it takes a lot of other factors. Mm -hmm. And I think Derek has mentioned a lot of them because I was discussing with a, a young man recently and he was so focused that he's so passionate about his business. But when he started mentioning his figures, how much he was making, and I started laughing at him, I'm like, Passion alone cannot make your business become successful. Make you the Warren Buffett sure. today, because you have to know that even Warren Buffett studied, uh, did a lot of investing, mm -hmm. did a lot of spending, did a lot of mistakes before finding himself in where he is today. Yeah. And I think there is this perception where every young person is doing business because when you ask them, yes, I'm so passionate about this problem, I want to solve it, mm -hmm. and it takes a lot more for us to be able to understand that. It's not only about the things that we perceive that will make us successful. There are environmental factors that can also make us successful. successful. So okay. if you need to partner with somebody to do it, go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. If you need to go and take a loan to do something, go ahead and do it. But for, for a lot of young people, I think the idea, I mean, it also happened to me. I was so passionate about, my, I was so passionate about things that I wanted to solve. Mm -hmm. And when I started, I got to realize that no, I can't continue, I can't cont continue on anymore. I have okay. to get people on board. I have to get money on board. I have to... Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of factors will definitely contribute okay. to making sure that uh, you are able to really sustain your business okay. beyond passion. But I think as young people, we should be able to demystify our, our mindset that passion is, a, is, is the only thing. Okay. It can be the key thing that can keep you going, mm -hmm. but it's not the only, only thing the only yeah. that can it's make like you... It's like it's a basic thing, but mm -hmm. it's what the... the I mean, I, 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 mean I, I like the example he gave about relationship. I mean, yeah. there's love, but like, it's not love that's going to keep <laughs> exactly. you going. <laughs> 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 right. yeah. Thank you very much. We'll go for yes. a short break, and when I return, we'll look at are there different types of entrepreneurs? Um, mm. Are we all supposed to create businesses and then look at why some business startups fail? Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right, viewers, this is AU Talks, and today we are discussing sustainable job creation for the African youth. After the commercial break, we will still have our, our guest here to discuss this issue into detail. Stay tuned, join us on our social media platform, send us your comments and your views, and let's read them for you.
Welcome back, viewers. This is AAU Talks on AAU TV, and we are discussing um, sustainable job creation for the African youth. I still have the two gentlemen in the studio. They are doing amazing work. That is Prince and Derek. Um, let me start with you, um, the, uh, Prince. Let's look at this issue in, in detail. Do we have different types of entrepreneurs? Um, sometimes I get a bit confused. Everybody parades himself as, a, as, a, as an entrepreneur. Do we have different types? Are we all supposed to create businesses or what are we all supposed to do? Okay, so I mean, from, from our perspective, uh, it's not different type of entrepreneurs, but mm. maybe different type of business owners. Okay. Uh, there's this idea of everybody needs to start a business, mm -hmm. but from, from there's, a, there's a perspective that says that it's people that solve needs, right. that are entrepreneurs, and people who solve problems that are businessmen. Mm -hmm. So it tends to create a lot of um, misconception or misperception. Uh, the perception a lot of young people have when it comes to that is different. Okay. Uh, when you're talking about solving need and problems, for example, Facebook is never a problem. Mm -hmm. Facebook is not solving a problem. Without Facebook, you can still live your daily life. But if this chair is broken, it becomes a problem. Without it, we cannot, we cannot sit here. Okay. And it's those people that are rather the businessmen that we see on the streets and all those kind of stuff. Uh, they are the people who are not really the fashionable businesses that we all want to enter into. But when it comes to entrepreneurship, we are all trying to see how we can solve a need. Okay. But the thing is, the need we are solving, how many people have that need? Mm -hmm. that, that's when, for example, you see a lot of Ghanaians creating apps similar to Facebook, and they're kind of surprised why their apps are not thriving. Because basically, you are solving need, but you are solving it to only 25 million people. Okay. And even for you to even, uh, I mean, market it, it becomes very difficult because it is not solving any peculiar need within like our locality. Mm -hmm. But for example, if you think, uh, if you take a lot of uh, business, a lot of young people are starting today, if you study it, you could see that they are becoming more innovative in their thinking. Mm -hmm. For example, you take a company like Haptel, everybody is not sending text message. Okay. But think about how easy and how fast you want to send a text message. So they came up with an idea that they want to create a platform where people can just upload contact and send a text message to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And they got it right. And because of that, other people are also copying them. So as young people or as uh, people who are eager to start businesses, mm -hmm. we're willing to sit down and really study what kind of business do we want to, st do we want to start? Mm -hmm. Do we want to solve a problem or do we want to solve a need? So and I mean, the, the, the issue has to do with identifying a business problem yeah, and coming or a, up need. With a, a need and coming up with a solution. Exactly. And until you do that, you can just be doing shadow boxing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, there are a lot of young people who are doing it, but, like, it's not really working for them. All right. They, are, they don't have, they have, they, some, some of them know the need and they know the problem, mm -hmm. but they don't know the kind of solution that the customer will actually need All right. mm -hmm. that, that will make the person satisfied. So, I mean, when it comes to play, um, and one, one of the key things that I've also, notif I've also noticed is, uh, when you are solving, when you're an entrepreneur, you tend to make more money than when you're a businessman. Okay. So a lot of young people are focused on trying to become entrepreneurs than businessmen. But one of the things you got to realize is that there, there are a lot of businessmen who are rich in Ghana mm -hmm. than entrepreneurs who are actually solving problems that we want to have as, as our fashion. Because most of the times we are reading things like from Europe and from America and other stuff. Mm -hmm. We are not taking time to really study our local ecosystem. Okay. And that's the reason why you see a lot of people starting today and then the next time they are failing because they've not been able to really come to terms into what can naturally make their business survive here mm -hmm. or what kind of problems or needs that are peculiar that people over here okay. need. Right. And even before you scale up, I mean, there are people, people start companies and they are thinking, I want to go global, I want to go this. But the thing is, are people in your locality even accepting what you're doing? Mm -hmm. Because if they are not able to accept what you're doing, and identify with, identify your with service, you, yes. you don't have any story to go and sell anywhere for mm -hmm. people to be convinced that, okay, you have an, an idea that, that can solve a problem because you solve it somewhere. Okay. So I think young people should really put into terms if they're, first, if they're, if they're solving a problem or a need, and if their locality mm -hmm. really understands what they are solving. Because if your local market accepts you, you can go anywhere. That, and that, that, uh, I mean, that, most of the times, we, well, we also use the ideas of Facebook and Twitter. Mm -hmm. But you have, to, you have to think of it that before even Twitter came to Ghana, it was successful somewhere else yeah, it before, before it came here. Okay, okay. So as young people, let's try and see how best 
and see where we can really fit ourselves because all of us have strengths and weaknesses. weaknesses okay. Are you, is your strength in becoming an entrepreneur? Because for becoming an entrepreneur, it takes a lot of time mm -hmm. for you to, even to make the money that you want to make. Mm -hmm. But if you are a business person in Ghana, you are, I mean, you have the enabling environment to make enough to actually spread for yourself. Maybe it might not be as big as somebody who will become an entrepreneur. Okay. How easy was it for you to move from the space of Ghana to Kenya with your business? <laughs> Um, in, in my case, I think um, that move was, it was first it was scary. Mm. And, and, and each time I get asked what has been my greatest achievement on earth, it's not the awards I've been nominated for. Mm. It's the fact that I have won over my fears. That was the first thing I had to conquer. Mm. It was scary. But it worked like that, you know. So sometimes, really, it's, it's not all the time that it will take so much time for it to work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may get lucky, you may be graced, I mean, it's favor of God, mm -hmm. and then boom, it catches fire. I was able to hold an event in Kenya, and preparation stage, I was not there. I did everything online. Mm -hmm. And the ticket prices for the event in Ghana, is we charge more in Kenya. Okay. And we had people attend, and I go to Kenya, and my first live television interview was on their biggest TV platform. Mm -hmm. Great. I mean, right. so just that move was, was, was worth it, you know. But just to buttress what Prince said, which is very important about um, that. Uh, for me, I, I, practically, I've come to identify various types of entrepreneurs and quickly I'll share. Yeah. I mean, I have sectioned them into, we have true entrepreneurs and regular entrepreneurs. Okay. Out of the regular entrepreneurs, we have the social entrepreneurs, we have the business entrepreneurs. Exactly. You understand me? People that are focusing on solving a societal need, okay. you know, NGOs, foundations and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the people who are actually into business. You understand me? And one thing he said about need is, one powerful thing I've come to identify with business is, I take my company as a case study. You have to be careful when you are choosing a need to solve or a problem to solve. Mm -hmm. Some needs today may not be needs tomorrow. They may be wants. The question is, will people be willing and able to pay for wants? I mean, wants or they will want us to focus on their needs. Okay. You understand? And I like the fact that we are talking about sustainable job creation. Mm -hmm. We are thinking about how to start on a path of sustainability. Mm -hmm. Sustainability is not decided today. It will happen eventually. True. It is the fact that 10 years from the day you start, you will still be able to look back and say, yes, I've built this business mm -hmm. for 10 years. It's still running. You understand? Even that, you don't get complacent because in business, anything can happen. Right. You have to continually be on that path and mm -hmm. put the, I mean, sustainability principles or strategies, you have to implement them in your company, you know, your, in what you are running. So, I mean, one of the things I've been preaching lately is true entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. True entrepreneurship. That's what we need. We need, we need, I would like to walk into, and that brings me to the question of asking people that, what is your Ghanaian dream? Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to have a Ghanaian dream. My Ghanaian dream is that I want to walk into shop, right? And I want to see made in Ghana milk, fresh milk. I want to see made in Ghana conflicts. I want to see made in Ghana sausage. Because we are facing a balance of payment deficit as a country because we are importing more than Everything. we are exporting. Exactly. Everything we eat, we import. Even fruit, fruits, vegetables. What is the problem? Mm -hmm. So what happens? We are going to have a lot of houses, a lot of money, and no food to eat. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the primary areas we can be focused on. And anybody that is focusing on solving one of these many problems we are facing in Ghana becomes a true entrepreneur because we are, we are really solving a problem mm -hmm. and a need at the same time which is a problem and a need. And that need will always be a need tomorrow because people will always want to eat. People always want to look good. People always want a good place to sleep. People always want to run their businesses. So you have to be able to be smart with choosing a sustainable path for what you are going to start that. Okay. Would this thing be necessary five years from now? Do you understand me? So yeah, for me, that is my thoughts on um, um, the various types of entrepreneurship and then I mean, how but, we can but, but, do, do, you, do you think that true entrepreneurs are born and not made? <laughs> are they made yeah. or they are born? I mean, I mean, it's it it depend. Uh, for me, I mean, some people are born entrepreneurs, and mm -hmm. some people have to be made. Some people have to be taught. Mm -hmm. Definitely, uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure. It's genetic. Entrepreneurship is not <laughs> in, in the genes. I mean, there are people who have given their businesses to their children, and the business have failed. Cool. It's it's not inside. Cool. I mean, it's something that you have to study. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that you have to experience. If you don't experience it. I mean, if you don't, if you don't, I mean, get into it and learn the nitty gritties because it, it comes down to a lot of strategy. It sure. comes down to a lot of talk. It comes down to a lot of talent. I mean, you have to take a lot to be able to like run a business. It's not mm -hmm. just about I'm the C, I'm the son of the CEO of this, this, this. Though sure. I can also run a business. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of young people trying to do that, and 
I mean, if, if you look at the statistics, most people, most successful entrepreneurs mm. don't give their business to their children to run. They rather allow them to even go and start their own thing or get employed somewhere else. I mean, just do a case study about mm. how many entrepreneurs that you've seen, even, even locally, mm. that's handled by their businesses to their children. So I don't think it's genetic. Okay. You have to be made. You have to go to the meal. I mean, yeah. you have to, to develop it. If, you, if yeah. you don't do it, I mean, you end up failing. And it goes down to a lot of people that even though, if, even if it's in your gene, mm -hmm. try to take experience from wherever you are studying under. Okay. I mean, if, if, if you don't, I mean, I know, for example, like uh, Kwame Despite, the son is currently the one in charge. But if you go back to really understudy the guys, you go, you're going to realize that from when they were young, They've been in the business. Mm -hmm. They've been understanding someone. They've, they've, they've to gone to serve someone. Yeah. But we have, we have a lot of young people who think like, okay, no, I can, I can go to Harvard and the next moment I'm made CEO. Yeah. I'm made CEO without going through any experience. Okay. And that's the reason why we get to ad advise a lot of entrepreneurs that mm -hmm. even if you want to involve your family in your business, don't give them top leadership positions. Mm -hmm. Let, Let them, them go through, the, go process through the process. Let them get to understand that, okay, this is how it works from the grounds. So Before mentorship, um, grooming, training, everything is important. Definitely. Right? I mean, if, if you don't get it right, mm -hmm. I mean, you're you going to get right. it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get it wrong <laughs> at, the top. at the top. And yeah. it's very scary. Okay. And uh, we've seen a lot of business collapsing, in, even in Ghana, mm -hmm. where we've seen f uh, the founders' children handling them at the forefront, mm -hmm. and you, ne you never hear of them handling any branch manager position. But at, all of a sudden, they are CEO, CEO yeah. of the company. And at the next moment, at the next moment. It's a very, it's a very uh, crucial thing. I mean, it's something we really need to make people understand. Like, it's, exactly. not, it's not a fancy thing. I know the boss. Yeah, the I'm, I'm the boss of, and, and one of the problems of, with these people is that the reason why, uh, one, of the, one of the reasons why they fail is the fact that they are not good with people. Mm -hmm. You know, you are into solve problems for people. If you are not good with people, you cannot do anything good for people. Exactly. And that is when the business starts to fail. Because mm -hmm. that moment, you've lost connection with your audience, mm -hmm. your market. Your market are not machines. They are human beings. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So once you are bad with people, you cannot be good as a business person. And yes, um, I believe that entrepreneurs are great. It's just like greatness. Mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 fine, you may be born, born into in royalty. Right. But yeah, some may be born. But mm -hmm. I, I believe that the, 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 the really... S um, strong ones, like resilient ones, are made. There are people that have grown into the process. Okay. They've been through the process, and it, it, the process makes them mm -hmm. a great entrepreneur. Okay, yeah, that, that's beautiful. Let, let's go to the last part of our mm. segment where we are looking at sustainable mm. businesses. Mm. I, I I can name or list the number of young people who started and they are nowhere to be mm. found because of the fact that I mean, you you share your experience, mm. the the kind of hardship or the the the, the limited resources you have to work yeah. with. Not everybody can go through the yeah, process because they want to be seen flashy with all the cars and yeah. money and everything. <laughs> How do we ensure, and I don't want us to go with the government, um, the government, government, government. As, as a young person, how will I be able to make sure that I create a business and the business is sustainable to even employ others? Let me start with, with Prince. Well, I mean, starting a business, first of all, is like, I mean, I always keep saying that it's an experience. Mm -hmm. Um, but in starting a business, you need to have a vision. Mm -hmm. And we tend to see a lot of businesses in Ghana not surviving beyond five years, beyond 10 years. Mm -hmm. And we have to ask ourselves why. I mean, even though it's beyond government, we, we need to f like really phantom the vision. Mm -hmm. What is the vision of the company? Because that's what carries the company wherever it go. Mm -hmm. But you can see that there are a lot of businesses in Ghana that do not have a vision. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of young people who are starting businesses because they are passionate about it but they don't have any vision for it. So for us as young people, in starting a business, we should try and table. In the next five years, in the next 10 years, where do we want to go? But it's not only about having a dream by having a vision. Mm -hmm. It's also about doing the work. And you have to come to terms to it that doing the work is not going to be smooth. It's going to be very rough. Mm -hmm. And I like what Derek said, that uh, starting a business is like giving birth to a baby, where you know that definitely the baby will fall sick. Mm -hmm. But you tend to see people whenever their businesses are in shambles or their business are experiencing some small problem, then they tend to give up. Okay. And that is what really affects a lot of businesses growing beyond even their vision or growing beyond how long they want to survive. So for us as young people, uh, I always tell people that it's very good and we are very blessed 
that as young people, we have come to this time where we know about how to start business or how to even run business. Mm -hmm. It's not even just that maybe we'll run business for the rest of our lives. It's possible that sometimes we just need it to go and run somebody else's business. Because I see a lot of young people in Ghana now who have business, who, are, who, who have run businesses and are giving up, sometimes for the good reason, sometimes also mostly for the for bad, bad reason. Reasons, yeah. And, and I, I, as I said earlier on, it's not just about starting a business, but it's about gaining experience. Mm -hmm. Because you have to know that we want, we, want to, we want to have thought leaders on business and entrepreneurship in the country. But how are we going to get those people? Is the people that have gone through the mill? Is the people who have, who have failed? I've started a king. The people who have failed and have stopped or have given up. Mm -hmm. I, I, I recently shared a story of uh, my first failed business. I want to start a barbering shop mm -hmm. uh, back in my village. I want to employ young people. I had this big idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, like in the next two years, I will, will open shops all over because <laughs> we make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But I came to term that no, I didn't have things in place to really even keep my dream going. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a team that would take me forward. I didn't have money that I'm sure that, okay, even if something fails, I mean, I'll be able to. And we realized that even after setting up the whole business, putting up the structure and everything, mm -hmm. there was nobody that we could even employ. And nobody mm -hmm. was willing to work with us. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was not that, just, just that we gave up on our business. Mm -hmm. For me, I realized that it was also a good moment for me to learn so that I can be able to get handle other businesses, businesses very well. Great. Thank you so much. Prince, let me let me take your Derek. Uh, Derek yeah. Let me take your view. Yeah. So um, I think um, building a sustainable business, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, one like Prince said, the vision is important. So that's well said. And the second thing is, uh, I believe in corporate culture. Mm -hmm. You know, a corporate culture. A culture is the a, 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 is is a way of life. Yeah. Okay. Is the reason why you become what you become, mm -hmm. and you get what you get. Because if you keep doing what you always do, you keep getting what you always get. And that is one of the things that uh, most startups do not think about, that what is my culture? How do I respond to emails? Mm -hmm. How do I respond to telephone calls? How do, I, how do the people that work with me represent the company? Mm -hmm. Do they understand what we are about? Do they understand the meaning of our logo? Do they understand the meaning of our colors? Do they know why we say cheers? Mm -hmm. Do they know why we say no? Mm -hmm. You understand me? And these are, the, it's, it's like a, it, the team. You know, if, if it's going to be sustainable, I always use God as a best example. Mm -hmm. Like I said, he, there's a man that created the world in six days and now has over 7.5 billion people working for him. What did he do? He duplicated himself in us. So we have been made like him. Mm -hmm. We are creators just like the creator. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the principles of sustainability. That don't, it's, it's not, the vision is not just for you. When the vision is just for you, then you're not in the path of sustainability. Sure. Then when you die or when you leave the, vision the scene, dies also. exactly, it, things, things slow down. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's powerful that you are not in the country and your company is still running, clients are still coming in as though you are here. Mm -hmm. Do you understand me? And that should be the goal of every startup entrepreneur, that how do this keep running even in my absence? Okay. Would this still make sense five years from now? What is the culture that I've put in place that myself and the people that I work with would grow into? Because just like the role of the CEO, mm -hmm. a corporate culture is not just adhered to. Mm -hmm. It is grown into. into. Okay. It takes time, people grow into it, and then it grows into the people. Right. And why do teams win? Why do teams lose? Mm -hmm. Because of the culture. Because of the way they do things. So once there's a way that, a structured way of doing things, then you know that you are positioning your company in the way of um, sustainability. And the second thing, um, getting ready for sustainability, you have to look at even your, aside your team, your clients. Because mm -hmm. the kind of clients you render services to or you sell to will determine whether you are going to be here for the rest of the, uh, for the, rest of the, the year or the rest of the years the ahead of you. Okay. You understand me? So you have the power to choose. And I always make people understand that there is a natural power we have. Mm -hmm. The power to decide what we want, when we want it, how we want it, and who we right. want it with. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So that natural power must be applied in, in your business here, even as on, you are on the path of sustainability, that you have the power to decide what product am I, what product am I bringing out, mm -hmm. when am I releasing it, when is the right time, who is this meant for? Because one of the things that is also killing business is the fact that people are targeting the wrong people for their products and services. So Not make, everybody on social media is important. for you. Exactly. You understand me? Mm -hmm. What is my target market demographics? What does my potential customer look like? Mm -hmm. What What is his, his or her possible name? Where would he be hanging out on a Friday 
Friday night. Where, mm -hmm. where would he be spending more time on social media, Facebook or Instagram? If it's a makeup business, your customer is on Instagram. Mm -hmm. If it's a product you're selling, people are on Facebook. You understand me? So you have to get your market right because that is one of the key drivers of sustainability. Mm -hmm. The reason why you be sustainable is when you are needed. Why will you be needed? When you are relevant. Mm -hmm. Why will you be relevant? Because you set a need for a certain targeted customer range. Do you understand me? And just like ice cream, not everybody likes ice cream. So not everybody's going to like what you do. And sometimes people need time to accept you. So it may take a year, two, or three. You, don't, you just don't give up. It's like a relationship. Mm -hmm. You have to take time to know the person. So it's just like that. People need to take time. Or they need some time to have a connection with, with your you. business. Because the reason why somebody will buy a Chanel bag costing $25,000 over a locally manufactured bag is because of the perception, because of the connection they have with the product. That mm -hmm. I want to have the feeling of knowing that I have a Chanel bag. It's customer loyalty, and it's, it's brewed from perception. Do you understand me? So also, now we come to the matter of perception. If you're going to be sustainable, what is the idea people would have about you? You have to define that idea. Mm -hmm. You have the power to define your brand. Because what you say your brand is becomes your brand, just like life. What The meaning you give your life becomes your life. So the meaning you give your business becomes your that business. becomes your image as well. Exactly. Thank you so much. Let me take a final one. Very quick one. Um, with you, oh, okay, so um, as young people, for me, I'll keep on saying it again, that experience is very important. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid of starting. And when, when it's very necessary for you to give up to, I mean, try and wait and see if whether it's for the good or it's for the bad. And I mean, we have a lot of things that we have to share with the future. And mm -hmm. we have a lot of things that we cannot give us excuse because we've not done. Mm -hmm. This is a task. As far as we are young, we have the energy, we have the time, we have the resources now to be able to make, make mistakes the and correct them. Exactly. And to make the best out of whatever we do. If whether we're going to commit mistakes, whether we're going to fail, we're going to succeed. Mm -hmm. And I want young people to have story. If you grow up one day, what story are you going to tell people? Sure. So I see a lot of young people trying to I mean not start anything at all because they are afraid that something 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 might happen. But I think that we all need a story so that one day we can look back and tell ourselves that we've done well or we've not done well. So as young people, not give up and let's just keep on doing uh, what we are passionate about. And I mean, even though we know that passion alone will not take us there, so we add more things passion to it. Passion is a basic thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me take your... Yes. So uh, final words, uh, I'll look into the camera so I'll talk to them directly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so final words to everyone, I, I mean, I'll go back to the basics, okay? Why did God make, make man? God made us to take dominion over the things that he had created. Yeah. Okay, so God expects us to continue on creation. Mm. And I connect entrepreneurship or even starting anything to, I connect it to like um, living your best life. Mm -hmm. Am I living my best life? What is my best life? Is the one I define it to be. Life is too short for you to not live your best life. Mm -hmm. Life is too short to live in the shadows of people. Mm -hmm. And funny enough, sometimes people love you because you are in their shadows. Mm -hmm. People love you because they are in control of your life. But like I said, there's a natural power to decide who you want to be. There's a natural power you have to decide what you want in life. It's just one life. Don't live it um, thinking it's one life. You only live one, so mm -hmm. you have to go all, all out there and do all the nasty <laughs> stuff. But sure. it's just one life. Live your best life. Mm -hmm. Define your life and live it the way you want to live it. And I know that um, people should know there's a charge on our lives as not just young people. I know old people are watching this as well. Mm -hmm. There's a charge on our lives as humans. What is the return on investment that God is making out of your living? Why should God give you the next minute, and the next minute, and the next hour, and tomorrow, and the next day, and the day after, okay. and the years after? You have to give him a, a, a correct reason why you are relevant to mm. his sustainable development plan, plan. for yeah. the world. That this person is going to draw in a lot of people into this and win these kind of souls for this purpose. And also linking it to entrepreneurship. Maybe your entrepreneurship may be your album you have to release. Maybe your book you have to write. Maybe it's, it's something you need to start. Maybe it's a project you need to start. It may not be necessarily or an business. idea you need to share with somebody. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, just, just know that it is time. The perfect time is now, and now is the perfect time. And the time is right because you make the time right. Mm -hmm. And so take charge of the time you have. We have as young people, as old people, whatever it is that you are, whatever it is that you want to do, do it right now. And also lastly, fight your fear. I mean, nothing should scare you. You should rather be afraid of one day sitting on heaven's lonely bench and looking back and thinking, I could have done this. Oh my God, I could have done it. And then God will tell you that 
if you had released that book, you would have made 10 million sales okay. and you didn't release it. If you had started a business, you would have made that sales and you didn't do it. Yeah. That should be your fear that one day you will be lonely on heaven's lonely bench and look back and regret. And lastly, you should get a copy of my book. Everything <laughs> is in there. Everything is in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've shared in here um, the principles that I've applied as a young CEO, you know, and um, it, this one is Testing the Paint, is the first reel I've released. And it's a subtitle, Growing into the Role of the CEO. I've shared in here how to even sell your business to a potential customer investor in 60 seconds. I've shared in here the principles I've applied. Principle of patience, consistency, principle of purpose, principle of sustainability for your business, growth and expansion. And I shared in here my whole experience of starting my business in Kenya okay. as a young Ghanaian entrepreneur. You should All get right. a couple of 15 cities back. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, um, gentlemen, yes. for, uh, for coming to the show Thank and you. sharing your knowledge and experience with young people on the continent. I know greater works are, are, are with Amen. us and a lot of things. Uh, I know tomorrow um, we will take over the continent, sure. create sustainable Amen. businesses, employ more people, and make sure that Africa becomes the best continent globally. Definitely. Thank you so much for Thank coming. Thank you very much. Viewers, this is AU Talks. Thank you so much for staying tuned. My name is Christy Sam. See you soon.